This is footage of the launch of Explorer 1, America's very first satellite. Um, it was launched at the end of January 1958 by the Von Braun Group, who was uh, part of the Army Ballistic Missile Agency, ABMA at the time. Um, their services were um, solicited when the Navy and its Vanguard project sort of um, failed in a very public way. Uh, the Von Braun Group had a launch vehicle that was already tested and ready to go called the Jupiter C. The Jupiter C had as its first stage a modified redstone, which is what you're seeing here undergoing checkout in a hangar at the Cape. The redstone first stage had its propellant tanks lengthened to hold additional propellant, and its engine had been modified from burning liquid oxygen and ethyl alcohol to burning a new high energy fuel called hydine, which was secret at the time. It was a blend of a couple of different hydrazine compounds and increased the redstone's thrust from about 75,000 pounds to about 80, 83,000 pounds on launch. The, um, the redstone had mounted to it three sets of solid rockets, relatively small solid rockets that were upper stages. They were small versions of the Sargent uh, battlefield missile rocket motor that was developed by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. They were called Baby Sargents. There was a second stage with 11 Baby Sargent motors, a third stage with three, and a fourth stage with one. So the Jupiter C was um, a four-stage vehicle. Here we're seeing checkout at the um, aft end of the Redstone. And here another section of the vehicle. As we'll see here in a minute or two when the um, vehicle is shown completely assembled, the upper stages were um, unguided. The, uh, the guidance and control package was resident in the redstone, so after separation of the upper stage, the upper stage had no steering. Um, and so to uh, make sure that those upper stage rockets were pointed in the right direction, they were mounted inside a cylindrical assembly that was very characteristic looking at the front of the Jupiter C that was looked almost like a galvanized wash tub and was about the same size and it was spun to uh, speeds of several hundred rpm by electric motors and therefore gyroscopically stabilized. This is the adapter section coming down over the forward end of the redstone. The um, upper stages, or what was referred to as the tub stages, were um, mounted on top of this. Very different looking um, atmosphere in the hangar than what you see today. I mean, today you would see everyone in clean room smocks and very, very formal looking.
the Redstone vehicle was built under contract to uh, what became the Marshall Center and was the Army Ballistic Missile Agency at this time, um, was built by Chrysler, uh, more specifically uh, Chrysler job shoppers on loan to the government. Here you see the, uh, the actual payload itself. This, this is the Explorer 1 payload um, that weighed about 18 pounds. Here's the uh, fourth stage uh, Baby Sergeant rocket motor. You can see that they, they weren't very big. And there goes the payload um, on top of the fourth stage. The um, black and white stripes that are quite evident on the Explorer satellite there were um, attempts at um, thermal control uh, inside the spacecraft. The black and white paints um, have the, the property is referred to as absorptivity and emissivity. Um, in space, the dominant heating mechanism is um, radiation from both the sun and the earth. And the black and white paint absorb and emit um, varying amounts of the radiant energy that, that impinge on them. And um, that constituted an attempt to keep the uh, temperatures inside the satellite within reasonable limits. This payload that you see here, Explorer 1, was um, the first spacecraft in a project that was called Project 416, meaning that there were four of these things produced for a total of $16 million. Now here you see the um, what I call the wash tub stages, um, second, third, and fourth stages being spun up. You see the, uh, the payload on top. I should point out too that this technique of spin stabilizing is um, still in use today, specifically on the uh, Delta II program. Its um, third stage is a 48-inch um, diameter solid rocket motor. It's also called a payload assist module or a PAM stage. I don't know if that name's gone out of gone out of favor or not, but. Um, that stage is spin stabilized prior to separation from the launch vehicle. So the remnants of the technology that you see here are still in use today. Here you see the completed Jupiter C on um, Launch Complex 26 at the Cape. This particular Jupiter C, uh, its serial number was 29, and that was coded in the missile. You see. Um, on the first stage just below the service structure, the letters UE, those are the second and ninth letters in the word Huntsville. 
And here you see the base of the redstone. The redstone sat on a, um, well today we call it a launch pad. It was, this was actually more of a launch table. Um, it sits on its four fins. Those four fins have tabs that when the fin is in view you can see they're relatively large. Those are actual aerodynamic controls that were actuated by the guidance system during flight for, for control. The um, Rocketdyne engine is not gimbaled but has um, graphite veins that protrude into the exhaust and they are turned on commands from the guidance system and they, um, they're used for um, control of the, the so-called thrust vector during launch. Also down at the base of the redstone off to the right you see a little protuberance or a, like a little hood sticking out of the base of the redstone. That's the um, one of a couple of um, ground umbilical connections. Uh, there was no umbilical tower per se. The uh, umbilical connections to the redstone were from the bottom. And in addition because the redstone had only a single engine um, it had no real means of um, controlling its roll attitude. Um, therefore, the launch vehicle is aligned with the firing azimuth by actually swiveling the whole bottom of the launch table. That, that launch pad that the Jupiter C is sitting on actually rotates and the launch table is rotated around so that the belly of the launch vehicle is pointed along the desired direction or along the desired firing azimuth. Here we see um, the beginning of liquid oxygen loading on board the Redstone. This is also a significant deviation from what we would consider normal procedure today. Today of course all the cryogenic handling is done remotely with people miles away and um, that was not the case then. Another interesting deviation from today's norm is that um, today liquid oxygen and cryogenics are loaded into tanks in the launch vehicle that have got sensing mechanisms in them to, to tell us essentially what the liquid level is in the tank. They had no such devices then. Um, the, the launch table itself is on um, uh, hydraulic sensors which go to actually power what amounts to a scale for which there's a readout in the blockhouse and liquid oxygen is loaded on board the vehicle until the scale says that the vehicle weighs this much. Here we see the uh, tub stage is spun up. There goes the umbilical mast, there goes ignition of the redstone and liftoff of Explorer 1.